All right, Shalom. This your Howard of the top coming at you again with this truth, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Yeah. It's like it. It's better ride. Ride of correction. It's like it. Um, it's, it's another thing that's wrong with this society. You know, um, Another th one one of the things that's wrong with this society is you know these people don't chasten their children, man. Right? They don't uh, scourge their son. They don't chasten their son, you know, their children. That's what's wrong with these fucking people, man. That's another thing that's wrong with this society. The Lord, you know, tells us that the rod of correction will drive that uh, foolishness out of that child, man. I just heard a child screaming like. I'm, I'm at work and this child's just fucking screaming and hollering and shit. Man, that's how these people got no home training, man. They don't whoop their children. That's why their children doing all that type of shit, man. That shit pisses me off, man. Cause you, you don't whoop your damn children. That's why they, they got, they are un, they are out of order, man. Unruly children, man. And your child out in public acting like that, man. Let me do that. Let me do that shit. I, I go home with no butt cheeks, man. That's what's wrong with these damn Edomites, man. So-called white people. Y'all don't whoop y'all kids. Fuck you, mom. Fuck you too, dad. Oh, let them words come out of my mouth. I'm going to go home with a swelling lip, everything. Black eye, everything. Even if I was to say that to my mom. My mom going to drop my ass real quick. I don't seen her drop somebody before. It was funny, but anyways... Um, the the point being, man, these people need to whoop their children, man, because you know, if you don't whoop your child, then your child ain't gonna be in order. You know, this is uh, Proverbs twenty two and fifteen. Foolishness is bound in the heart, in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, man. And you know what to drive that, that foolishness out? You, you you whoop that ass, man. It ain't no way around it. And this society makes it seem like a bad thing to whoop your kids, man. They'll lock you up for whooping your kids, man. Ain't that some bullshit, man? And this is straight out of the scriptures, man. And they claim to be God-fearing people. But the, the, what the scripture says, the, uh, uh, you whoop your child, man. You beat your child. Because, you know, in this truth, uh, we get chastened. That's what Yahweh Bashim Yahushua be doing to us, man. He be chastening us. This is Proverbs 19 and 18. Another precept. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. What does that mean, man? Chasting your son and don't care about his crying. Maybe he crying. Oh well, man. Still beat his ass. This is Proverbs 13 and 24. This is what I was looking for. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him, chastening him, be times. So if you love your son, man, you're gonna beat him if he's doing some foolishness, man. And this is straight out of the scriptures, man. Um, we get chastened by Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, man. This is uh, Proverbs 3 and 11. My son, despise not the chastening of Yahweh, neither be weary of his correction. So we correct our children, and we, we chasten our children, correcting our children. And Yahweh by Shem Yahushua chastens and corrects us, man. You know? The scripture says despise not the chastening of Yahweh. So when you we get corrected, you know, that's the chastening of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh And we cannot despise that, man. Yeah, that's him correcting us. 
ooh, this is Hebrews 12 and 6. And I'm going to start at 5. Hebrews 12 and 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Because when you enter into this truth and into this fold, you are a brand new child. You, you start over, man. Your age and this truth starts over. It's like you just reborn, you know, in the spirit. You you be a little babies in this truth, you know? And um right now I'm probably like uh a 10 month old baby, 11? Not sure. But you know, um we when we enter this into this fold, man, we it's restart. We we a newborn baby. We are children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. So we not to despise the chastening of Yahweh by Shemel Shah when he does chasten us, man, which is every day. It just it could be in different situations, man. It doesn't matter. You know? Yahweh by Shemel Shah could chasten us every day, man. This is verse uh, 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. So once you enter the, into this truth, man, the Lord gonna get on your ass immediately because you his son now. You know, he, he you you his son now. So as soon as you enter into this word, into this fold, into this truth, the Lord is gonna get on you right right then and there, man. It it doesn't matter where, man. You can be, he can use your job to get at you. Situations at your job or whatever, man. That guy be holding that damn baby, man. I'll beat the shit out of her ass, man. I mean, it's just, uh. It's like, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Uh. It's like, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, I remember. When you start into this truth, man, when you enter in, uh, the Lord starts immediately getting on your case, man, because you his son. Now, this is, I'm going to read this again. This is, ver this is Hebrews 12 and 6. For whom the Lord, which is, for whom Yahweh loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So when you are received as a son of Yahweh Shemel Shah, you come into this fold, to this truth, to this word, and start doing the work that is required of you. Uh, that you are commanded to do, your how about Shemel Shah gonna start getting on your case, man? He gonna chastise you because you his son now. Look what he did to Yahweh Shah, man. It said the scripture said it pleased Yahweh to do that to Yahweh Shah, man. So how much more you and us, the brothers, man? Verse seven: If ye endure chastening, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons. For who what? So like you, for what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? So if if you how not chastening you man something's going wrong. If you're not going through something man, something's wrong. You know? You how about shot something's wrong. If you're not going through any chastisement, something is wrong. You need to throw your flag. You know, you need to check yourself. You need to examine yourself, man. If some not if if um uh, if you how about Shmiel is not chastening you. Uh this is verse 8. But if ye be without chastisement, where, whereof all are partakers, everybody's supposed to get chastisement from the smallest to the greatest. Then are ye bastards and not sons. So if you're not getting no type of chastisement from Yahweh by Shemel Shah, then that means you're a bastard and not a son. This is verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. And you know, when you did something wrong as a child, man, you got a whooping, man. That's correction. That's chastisement. Why he did that? Because he loves you. But Yahweh Bashim Shah takes us through the same thing. But it's more on a spiritual level, man. And then it's going to get physical. It's right now, it's on a spiritual level. We're going through spiritual chastisement. And we gave them reverence. Shall we not be, Slaki, shall we not much rather be in subjection? Unto the Father of spirits and live. So we ought to be in subjection to Yahweh Shemel Shah so we can live, man. You know? Verse 10. For they vow, for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, 
but he for our profit. So Yahweh Bashim Shah is chastening us to make us better. It's for our profit, man. That we might be partakers of his holiness. Mm. This is verse 11. Now no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. So the chastening is difficult. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which exercised thereby. So I'm going to stop right there. I got another precept in mind. I'm going to end it off in this. This is Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 5. And having been a little chastened, chastened, they shall be greatly rewarded for the Most High proved them and found him worthy for himself. So with that, man, I hope you was edified through the scripture. I mean, it's like through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shah. Well, let me get this last week. Volume of the book. This is Psalms 40 and 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. This is Yahweh Shaz. You know, he said he comes in the volume of, book, of the book. And, then, and that's the scriptures, man. He don't come in the volume of these other bullshit ass book, man. This is the book that he comes in, man. He comes in the volume of the book, man. So I hope you was edified through, script, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by some Yahweh Shaz. Um... Um... I believe that's it. Uh, that was all on my spirit to get. But uh, like it says in Wisdom of Solomon 3, 5 and, I think it's 5 and 3 or 3 and 5. So like it. I'm, I got to read that again, man. That's spirit, that scripture is uplifting, man. It keeps your spirit up. I think it's 5 and 3. What was it? 3 and 5. So like it. Yeah. I'm going to start at 1. Three, three. This is West Solomon three, one through five. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High, and there shall no torment touch them. So Yahweh Bashmi Abshai has our souls in His hands, man. Verse two. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure is taken for misery. So for to these stupid ass niggas, these clueless ass bums and shit out here, man, in their sights, and we look to perish and to be look like you know dead, man. They, that when we die, man, we just, I don't know, man. Like, they consider our going away as misery. Verse 3, and they going from, and they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. It's speaking about the spiritual world, man. You know, the spirit world. When we, when we die, when these niggas out here threaten to kill us and shit, man, we don't care, you know, because we know we're going to be at peace in the spirit world. Verses 4, verse 4, for they, for though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. Because that's all we hope for, man. That's why we out here working. That's why we are doing this. That's why I'm doing this video right now, man. Trying to stay in the spirit. Trying to stay uh, close to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh in these last days, man. So I can be protected by him. And be kept during the hour of temptation. You know, the Lord said, if you keep my word, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. And that's what I'm striving for, man. You know? This is verse 5. And all the stuff that Yahweh Shemel Shah has for us. This is verse 5. Having been a little chastened, they shall be greatly rewarded for the Most High proved them. How did he prove us? Through, through fire, man. Through adversity. Adversity, fire. He take us through that, that trial of fire, which fire purifies. And Yahweh Shemel Shah purifying his men. For the Most High proved them and found them worthy for himself. Verse 6. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And like it's like the scripture says, present your body as a living sacrifice. This is Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, bre therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Most High, which is your re reasonable service. So that's what we ought to do. 
Um, that's what we're doing. We're presenting, presenting our body as a living sacrifice, our burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble.